our cars are all the way over there. That's look, and we had to walk the trail all the way up here. This this is really blowing minds. Like I'm ready to get beamed up by the aliens at this point. Like so. It's like, okay, I'm not appreciated if I am taking on the traditional role of a woman, which is to be at home and to be a housemaker, but I'm also not appreciated or, like, taken seriously if I'm out here in the workforce making my own bread. Now I'm too independent, you get what I'm saying, and I'm trying to be a man. So it's like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. I know I'm a pimp, but darling, Hi guys, AJ LeJ here and I am back with another video. This is a new video for a new week. Today is Sunday, May 28th. Yes. Um, last week was kind of a rough week, y'all. Um, I lost a lot of money in the stock market. Well, not the stock stock market, but the um indices market. I do I uh play indices. So, um I was a little depressed so i really didn't want to like film so but we're back this week um i end up studying a lot more like strategies and i learned a little bit more so i'm more confident going into this next week um getting into the market or whatever if you guys want me to do a video on like my stock or my trading strategies and stuff like that then just let me know and of course i'll dedicate a video for you guys anyways right now um kevin and i are um returning back home we had to go pick up something from a client and now we are on our way back home it is so beautiful out here we are actually up in the mountains and it's just i don't know like every time we we come up here i'm just like it's so beautiful like it's just really really beautiful i never would have imagined like two years ago that we would be here you know like doing and living our life like how we living now i'll catch you guys once i get back to the house because we're actually about to go to the volcanoes today we went yesterday but i went super late and they were about to close the gate at like five o'clock we got there at like 4 15 so today we actually didn't get to go like on the actual volcanoes and stuff so today i wanted to go back to go hiking on the actual volcano so i'm gonna bring you guys with me anyway see you guys in a minute <laughs> Hey you guys, so we are all in the car. We're on our way to the volcano so we could go hiking. Um I don't have my little what's the name? I'm so mad. I need to get what the I need to get me um a little docking thing for the top. Um I was gonna wait to get that though once um I got my actual like vlogging camera. I vlog off of my YouTube. I mean my uh my iPhone 13. So we'll see y'all. We'll have better footage in the coming months, okay? Um but anyways, yeah. So we're on our way, me, Kevin and the kids. We got our water jug. Kevin got his little water backpack thing to keep him hydrated. I probably need to get an umbrella because it is pretty warm out today. Um, It's currently 90 degrees right now. And there is no shade out where we're going. So, yeah, I think I do probably need to get an umbrella. Can you, um, Jace, go in the trunk and see if you see an umbrella. If not, ask your dad, does he have an umbrella? But it should be an umbrella in the trunk. I believe. If not, we we're about to stop by Walmart and get a um, yeah. umbrella because we can't be out there like that. <laughs> okay, we cannot be out there like that. Okay, y'all. 
I'll catch you back up with you guys once we actually get out there. Hey, you guys. So we finally made it out here to the volcano. Um, Y'all, it's... Ooh, ooh, it's flies and stuff all out here. Oh, my God. Okay, so we are... I guess, I'm guessing we're near the top. That's the top of that one. It's three of them out here. That's the other one. We have to walk the trail. You can't like deviate from the trail. If you deviate from the trail, they could charge you. So anyways, y'all, I'm gonna continue recording and try to get through this. Oh my God, there's so many freaking bugs. Ugh. Okay, y'all, so what is going on? Oh, yes, what? <laughs> Wait, huh? Where? You don't see him? Oh, no, I don't see him. Okay, we gotta run. Okay, look, we gotta run through it. Come on, we just gotta run through it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the f that was. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. See, this what happen when you be trying to be out in nature and do all this extra. Sh okay. <sighs> Kevin. You ain't see all of the bugs? Are you scared of them? Ava wasn't scared. She ain't even know what was going on. Okay. okay. I guess I was screaming. Ooh. Ooh, y'all. My heart rate up. Like, like, it was, like there was bugs I really jumping. feel like we out here in the desert trying to survive. We, we have, we done walked a very long way. That's, that could be like one Ooh. mile. I think it's more than one mile, Jason. This is like three miles. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, yeah this, this is a desert. Yeah, this is. This is like a nature trail for real, for real. Like okay. The, oh, yeah, like the. Like okay, the back part. No, more than that. More than that. Here, hold it. Okay, y'all. Okay. Okay, now we, we didn't hit the actual trail, y'all. So, we didn't hit the actual trail. Wait, no, Kevin and Abel. Oh, you excited, huh? I'm going on the hill. Yeah. I know, Ava excited. Be careful, Ava. Whew. Right. I love my friend. You said what, baby? I love rocks. Oh, you do love rocks? Yeah. I know. Mama see you with rocks all day. Walk, Come on, walk, go. Walk, walk, walk that way. And your pants on backwards. I love rocks, And we know you love rocks to the butt. Yeah. I'm going to do with the backwards. I'm play the rocks. Yes, you do play with the rocks in the backyard. Yeah, I love big the rocks. Y'all, Jake's all the way up there. Yeah. Whew. He a good one. It's hot. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, y'all. Oh, Lord. If you're trying to get a cardio in, please go hiking. So, we are up, like, farther up on top of the volcano. The kids, they've walked ahead of me. Let me show you now. Okay. Okay, so we about to go up to the top. Oh, my God. That's like a real-life cactus. Okay. So we about to go up to the top, y'all. I, I can't really vlog too much because I gotta stay steady on these rocks, making sure I ain't gonna twist my ankle. And I'm holding this, and I got my little water canteen with me too. So it's like a juggling act. So I'ma come back once we get to the top. 
Yeah, we walked a very, very long way. Yeah, let's see if we can go. It is cool here, surprisingly. Okay, you guys, we made it to the top. I don't need my umbrella because oddly enough, it's cooler up here than it is down there. I don't know the scientific reason behind it, but Jace, do you know? No. Why it's cooler up here than down there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how because the sun is closer um, to the mountain. Yeah, it's saying the top of the volcano, but what? Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, so... Yeah, oddly enough, it's cooler up here than it was down there, so I don't really need my umbrella. And it's very, very windy up here, so it's giving us a nice little breeze. I thought it was going to be a big hole. That's yeah, hard. no. I guess it filled in over time. But as you can see, ooh, ooh, it's a lot of bugs up here. As you can see over here, that's all like volcano, hard molten, um, hard lava, or lava that's hardened. Um, over time, closed area do not enter. Oh, yeah, you can see a crevice of the earth. Yeah, it's really nice and peaceful up here, y'all. Hold on, let me show y'all. Yeah, y'all start. Um, so y'all, we came back um, to the local Zemo area. We walked to the first volcano. I showed you guys that, and we was about to go to the second one, but. It got too windy and it, it was it just became a lot. So we just decided to turn around. So now we're making that long trek all the way back to the car. The kids got kind of a head start right now because they are walking kind of slow. So we gave them a little head start. Uh, so we about to walk back to the car. I'm gonna get back to y'all once we get to the car because it is steaming hot out here. I can't vlog and hold the water and hold the umbrella all at the same time. So, anyways, talk to you guys in a minute. Hey, y'all. So, this is the next day. Um, I wasn't able to film because my husband was playing around and knocked my camera out of my head yesterday and broke my broke my phone. So, um. I could only film uh, with the front camera. I could only film with the front camera. So no back camera action. Where we end up going to um, my service provider, my phone service provider. And they are sending somebody out to the house to fix my camera screen. The way that it, it fell face forward, but it messed up the sensor 
um, it hit the sensor that um, sh like shows the back screen or, or that senses the back camera. I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> I can't tell you. I don't work for Apple. So, um, yeah, for some reason, the front screen works, even though the front screen is what got cracked. And for some reason, the back camera doesn't work. I don't know. Anyway, um, so today is Memorial Day. Um, I just bought tickets to go see The Little Mermaid. Y'all, I've like I've been watching reviews on The Little Mermaid and I am highly, highly disgusted. Not saying that anybody has to agree with me. Hold on one second, because I'm about to like start on my hair. So not saying that like everybody has to just be so amazed that the movie ah, is, you know, to everybody's liking. I'm not saying that. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I've seen so many reviews nitpicking the most ridiculous things that they wouldn't have nitpicked if it was a white actress. I really just feel like a lot of anti-blackness is being shown and it's a lot of like passive aggressiveness from what I've seen in a lot of different interviews. Um, so because they don't want to full out be like, oh, well, I don't want to see a main character black. They're, they just are nitpicking things that really don't even matter. Like somebody said that hey, Halle Bailey's Mo distracted them so much in the movie. Like, are you serious? Are you ser are you a five-year-old? Like, it's really not that serious. A fing mole on her forehead. Anyways, so that was one of the things. Then somebody else said that they were upset because I guess with the um marketing of it, Haley, Halle Bailey she's like i guess gearing more towards little girls of color my thing is yes she is because no offense but everything else in this world media just in general is geared to freaking caucasian people and i'm just gonna be all the way 100 unpopular opinion i really don't give a f everything is really just catered to caucasian people and we need to start making it normal to call this shit out. Like, every other, you literally have 20, 30 other movies that's dedicated to a main character being a white princess. You get what I'm saying? The only other princess that we have, I believe, saying cartoon-wise, is uh, Tiana. Because they decided to make this one princess black, now all of a sudden it's an issue. My thing is, I feel like, honestly, she could have been Mexican. Well, actually, she couldn't have because everything is set in the Caribbean, which is mainly populated with black people. So technically, they weren't character swapping, they were character correcting, but you know, you don't we, we don't want to talk about that. You get what I'm saying? I, I just don't I don't like this real this anti-blackness. Not only that, like we can't have anything to ourselves. Like <laughs> just cause she's like, you know, giving a shout out to um black little black girls doesn't mean she's being anti-white either. She's just giving representation and acknowledging a minority group that never gets recognized, okay? Like, what the f My thing is, the reason why you're feeling like that is because that's how you are. With Black people, we just want something exclusive because we're never included in anything. We're never included in nothing. 
if, if the only time we are is when they want to steal our creativity and our motherfucking uh, concepts. That's the only time that you see them like, oh, yeah, to make a dollar off of us, to be exploited. That's when. So I'm I'm just really, really annoyed <laughs> um, because people are trying to say, people are trying to say that this is just a character swap. It's not. It's not just a character swap. I see videos of Haley, Haley Bailey's um, grandfather. It was a video of her aunt and her grandfather going to the premiere of The Little Mermaid. And they were talking about how her grandfather at the age of five was still picking cotton in the fields of South Carolina. So my thing is, it's not just a character swap. It's showing the growth and the evolution of Black people. For him to be able to sit there and see his granddaughter being the main character in one of the biggest movies all over the world. This isn't just like a little black satire movie that's being filmed you know black comedies or black films in general black films that don't get wide production budgets or anything like that so for her to be in a a big budget film to for him to be able to come from picking cotton in south carolina to sitting in this theater and seeing his bloodline, his bloodline that came from picking cotton and being enslaved on this major platform. It's not just a character swap. And I'm tired of people saying that. So to have a black girl resting in her soft femininity being portrayed as such in a major blockbuster film, it's not just a character swap. I'm sorry, it's not. Not only that, I also seen comments saying that they would have been okay with um, Ursula being played by a black woman. Whoa! How stereotypical. A big black woman playing a f***ing villain in a movie. Do you hear how you freaking sound? I think like... <sighs> then I also seen footage or re um what is it uh reviews saying that this is just a hand me down performance for black people that um what was it Black Panther was an original character and that we should have an issue with. Um, this not being an original character that it was switched into, you know, a black person. Well, baby, if that's the case, half of the films that have been filmed in like in history, y'all should feel like it's a fucking hand-me-down then. Because a lot of them were whitewashed, where it was originally a black character or a Native American character or a Hispanic character or a, a Chinese uh, character that was turned into a white person. Like, what the fuck are you saying? You're not making sense. You're making points that are convenient for your argument right now to stay within your white privilege. That's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. Like, are you for real? Like, I'm so annoyed <laughs> y'all i'm so annoyed like it is blowing me at this point like i went on a whole rant earlier on my um instagram follow me on instagram if you're not already following me on instagram this is the world that we live in like they will go to any extent and say anything to um just condone the bullshit at this point. There have been so many other nationalities outraged because their characters were whitewashed. You get what I'm saying? 
Like, it's been so many times that a character has been whitewashed or made lighter or instead of it, instead of them being like full that nation that ethnicity they made them like mixed or they were of lighter complexion of that like ethnicity like we we not about to sit up there and play games that's what we not about. we ain't about to do that okay I was just so annoyed this morning like looking at the reviews and stuff because I'm about to Go watch the movie today. Um, then people were talking about how it's not going to hit a billion dollars. Who gives a f I'm pretty sure Disney does. But I don't care about it hitting a billion dollars. Reason being is, it's about the representation. Okay? It's about the representation of a black woman in a good light. Haley, Halle Bailey did her fucking thing. She showed the world, hey bitches, I'm talented and I'm here. She wasn't a villain. She wasn't a mad black woman. Woman, She was able to portray a soft feminine in a positive light. Okay? That's all we wanted as black women. I swear, we as black women, we get shit on the most. Like, God. Like, can we live? Like, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the anti-blackness. I don't like the racism. Um, it's I just I don't I don't like it. Honestly, I feel like the world is changing. The world is becoming more inclusive, woke, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of people who wear exclusivity or non-inclusion benefited they're getting mad because it's no they understand that that exclusivity or inclusive or non-inclusivity it, it's not going to benefit them anymore they're not going to benefit anymore monetarily they're not going to benefit anymore so like now you you're oh oh Oh, inclusivity is coming. Inclusivity is coming. Yeah, because the thing is, they think that as black people, Hispanics, people of color, they think we're going to treat them how they treated us. <laughs> That's all that is. They know they've been shit for the last 400 years. They know they have been. And they know they still are. Racism is still rampant. I don't give a how far we have come, racism is still alive and well. You know, we're a little bit more comfortable as, you know, black people. We ain't got to sit there and run from the Ku Klux Klan. But, um, yeah, the, they know that they've been towards us. They know, they know that they've set up different structures to hinder us and profit off of exploiting us and keeping us in bondage. They know this. You get what I'm saying? So, um, my thing is, I'm not saying that black people are where we were 40 years ago, even like 20 years ago. We're farther along than that. I'm not trying to sit here and play the victim card. But what I'm saying is we are going to call a spade a spade. Y'all not going to sit here and piss on us and call it rain and say that, oh my God, black people... They just want to be the victim. No, we don't want to be the victim. We don't want to be the victim. Like, what? who the fuck wants to be a victim? We just want equality. That's the fuck it. All we want is fucking equality. But having equality is going to offset the balance of exploitation. <laughs> you can't, you can't have equality and and not or exploit somebody and have equality you can't they're gonna make more money from exploiting us than giving us equality like i don't understand why people don't understand this shit. so stop saying because you've given us yay we can get high paying jobs yay we can be you know um 
athletes. The only re to me, being an athlete is just like being a slave. Yeah, you get paid millions of dollars over five years, but all of the owners are billionaires. What athlete have you seen that is a billionaire from being just an athlete? We only have two or three billionaire rappers. What tech giants are black? So I understand we've come a long way, but it's still not equal. We still don't have equality. We've only had one black president. Like, we've never had any Hispanic presidents. We've never had any um, Asian presidents. We've never had any president. You get what I'm saying? Like, yay. We had one black president, then we went back to how things were. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel like it's, we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go, y'all. Being inclusive in society. Like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. This this, this is really blowing minds. Like, I'm ready to get beamed up by the aliens at this point. Like, uh, I'm about to head out. I'm about to brush my teeth and go get some eggs. Because Jay said that we're missing some eggs. And then, um... I think it's almost 8 o'clock now. We need to leave out by like 9, 15-ish so that we can make it to um, the uh, airport. I was about to say the airport. Look, if you do need a vacation. So that we can make it to um, the movies by 10 o'clock. We're going to see an early show. So um, anyways, y'all, this week is going to be my reset week. Because last week, I was just sitting there depressed, like I told you guys before. Um, so, I'm... Y'all. So, I'm, I'm just, you know, recalibrating this week. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey, you all. So, we are currently at the mall. That's a whole other story. We are currently at the mall. Um... We are waiting on Aunt Anne's. I shouldn't even be waiting. This is your food. You should go over there and go check on them. So we waiting on the kids to get Aunt Anne's. Okay, what do we call them? The mini pretzel dogs. So do I go? Yeah, go ask them, say hi. Are the mini pretzel dogs done? Uh, so we are waiting on the mini pretzel dogs. And then we're going to head back home. What do you yeah. Get hey, back over here. You gotta vlog, be a mom, do all this stuff. It's done? No? He don't know how to go, girl. Yo, I'm about to go over there to go see if the press the dog can. You are scared? Yes. I don't have that confidence. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people in line, so. <laughs> So you ain't want to hop in front of the line just to ask him what the press does, but I'll go do it. Oh my God. Okay. Y'all, here we go. That is so funny. I knew he wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so I got the pretzel dog for the children. Hold on. Yeah. Y'all would never be coming after me like some scoundrels. Okay. You need to share. Get one. Everybody just get one to start off with. Ava, get one. Get Ava one right there. That's yours, Ava. Kevin, did you want one? It's hot. Yes, it is hot. Oh, no. I already ate it home.
know y'all, but for some reason, I don't like them. I feel like they changed the hot dog in it. I don't yeah, think it's, um, yeah, I don't think it's Nathan's because it used to be Nathan's hot dog. I don't think it's Nathan's anymore. Mm. Okay, hey y'all. I am in the sauna at the gym. My whole body is hurting. I haven't been to the gym in like a week. Week, week and a half, somewhere around there. Um, so I did one class. I got 15 minutes to be in here before the body combat class start. So I was just coming to you guys, giving you guys a little update. I'm about to put my phone up because, baby, I don't want it to overheat in here. Anyways, see you guys in a little bit. Oh, and I got my phone fixed today. FYI. They came out to the, to the house, took my phone, fixed it in his car, and then gave it back. Verizon, you guys did very, very well. Anyways. I'm about to sit in the sauna for a second. I'll see you guys in a minute. So today we are going to go to the Albuquerque Biopark. Um, we went earlier this year in like January. However, they had an exhibit that they were building that wasn't open yet. So we're actually going to go back today and see if the exhibit has opened. I tried calling y'all because I know y'all probably like, why wouldn't you call first? <laughs> to see you know if it's open or not i did and y'all the person could not help me with that information so we just said we're gonna wing it we're gonna wing it because we don't have anything to do today anyway and we're just gonna go back to the zoo so hopefully the exhibit is open if not then we just went to the zoo um the zoo is very reasonably priced here compared to michigan y'all I think I was paying like $14 a person in Michigan. Here, I believe if you have like Medicaid, my children are on Medicaid. So um, if you have Medicaid, then um, it's like a discount. I think it's only it was only like $9 for all of us to go to the Albuquerque Zoo or whatever. So make sure you show, like if you go to the zoo, make sure you either show them, if you have, if you're a SNAP recipient, um, make sure you show them your SNAP card or if you're a Medicaid recipient, make sure you show them your Medicaid card so that they won't charge you full price. Well, that's what we're doing today. So I'm gonna take you guys with this. It's a little bit chilly today. It said it's only supposed to be 70 degrees, which we've been having mainly like 80 plus degree days, some 90 degree days. So, um, I'm surprised that today is a little bit cooler, but I'm not going to complain. I'm just giving me a little sweater, um, so that I could wear to the actual zoo so that I won't be like chilly or whatever. And then, you know, I'll probably bring a couple of snacks and stuff for the kids because I really don't want to pay <laughs> for the zoo food. Like y'all, I got a question. Is sim doing simple things becoming like way more expensive? For instance, like going to the movies is a hundred over a hundred dollars for me, my husband, and my children. Every time we go to the movies, it's over a hundred dollars. The tickets themselves cost around fifty dollars. Fifty actually, that's if we go on like before matinee is fifty dollars. If we go on a Wednesday, it's five dollars a person, so it's only twenty-five dollars. But if we go just on a regular day, like say if um, there's a new release, y'all, we spend it over $100 because the tickets alone are like $64. We end up finding this theater out here. It's called Regal Cinema. I believe they have it in other states. It's not just here in New Mexico. But Regal Cinema, if you go online to their website, they have an unlimited movie pass. So we were, me and Kevin were just thinking like, it'll be way more like reasonable economically <laughs> to get that pass because it's $18.99 or like $20 a um, month. And you just see as many movies as you want to or whatever. It's kind of like movie pass. Let us dare not talk about movie pass. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it's kind of like movie pass before that specific movie theater. So we said we're gonna just do that next month. I'm gonna get more information about it to see if like you could do it monthly or saying like, do you have to enroll annually or is it like a monthly thing and you could cancel whenever you want to? Um, 
because a hundred dollars a month like what if it's only like june through july that you know june through july the kids are only are go back to school august 3rd so that would be our main thing that we would be doing this summer so i will only maybe want it for like two or three months so i'm gonna see if they can do it that way where it's just a monthly thing and i can cancel and pick it up whenever i want to <sighs> y'all you gotta be economically smart nowadays okay because the way this economy is going they're trying to take us all out between inflation uh not having wages match inflation like it's ghetto screaming ghetto and then also what else did we what else was starting to get very expensive well we already know food so let me tell you guys i'm completely transparent um i got a, of course you know i got a new job so i'm making over the minimum um what is it the poverty line before when i stayed in michigan i was eligible for snap benefits Hence why my children are on Medicaid and it's other factors that make them eligible for me Medicaid. But anyway, they are not eligible for SNAP. <laughs> we are not eligible for SNAP. And baby, when I say it's so expensive, like it's so expensive. I'm really sitting here trying to figure out like how to get the money by tomorrow because I'm not the type to live paycheck to paycheck baby i've just never been the type i've always been the type to live underneath my means i don't understand why i decided at the age of 32 to you know move come out here oh my god i was tapping at gas very aggressively like i got scared for a second y'all <laughs> i don't know why i decided to like i you know that lucky girl syndrome i've been thinking that i've been a lucky girl which technically i feel like i have to be honest when we came out here our rent was literally i believe 850 dollars more than what we were paying in michigan and i had no idea how we were gonna pay that when i signed this lease y'all i winged up out of this i'm gonna just i'm gonna be all the way 100 not saying we like paycheck to paycheck or anything like that we're making our bills and seeing that i'm doing this whole black living in new mexico just moving in general you get what i'm saying i want to be completely transparent with like how you need to prepare for a move okay so i feel like the only reason we're even making it for real for real right now is the fact that i had a very large savings account before we moved out here so i had over ten thousand dollars ten thousand ten thousand plus saved before we made our move so when we made our move here it wasn't like i was only using um it wasn't like I was only using my actual like income to move out here. So we the savings my savings account was large enough to where I had um, our actual like rent money saved for a minimum of three to four months. So if anything happened with you know Kevin or I's um, income we had enough to be good hold us over and give us time to re-up or whatever so in the midst of that i realized that i needed to make more money and y'all that's what i end up doing like before we even came out here i was looking for other jobs making more money i will say that when with the move in make sure you have money saved up like you know sometimes it, it works for people moving on a whim but with me being a mother of three a wife us having me during my move i was moving with five other people you get what i'm saying like it was my whole family i can't just wing it i will say that with moving please be prepared um at least be a little bit responsible than just if it's just you though shit do you you get what i'm saying like 
my little sister she would just be like hey i'm moving to la or i'm moving to new york and she'll just hop on the plane with one large suitcase and be gone for four or five months you know you can do that when you ain't got no kids or no man <laughs> make sure you're prepared when you're moving okay and i feel like i want to do it in a separate video because um i didn't come from money and i'm not gonna sit here and say like i'm by any means i'm not wealthy like my husband and i together make six figures but like on my own i want to make six figures you get what i'm saying so um we i will we're not i don't feel like we're middle class like this is not middle class like we i guess we live a middle class life if you want to say that like we stay in a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar house me and my husband drive you know nice cars he has a 2021 i have a 2022 um so i guess you could say we live like a middle class life or whatever but i still want more not saying that i want to like do the rich and famous oh i want to be a billionaire and you know this and that i'm not saying that a millionaire yes i would love to like have 40 million or 100 million dollars in the bank but you would never know like the way that i live my lifestyle you would just, you just would never know that you get what i'm saying that's my type of vibe is it called quiet luxury you would literally have to come to my house or see what type of car i'm driving to know that oh she has money you get what i'm saying you really wouldn't know from looking at me that i got that kind of money so i just prefer just and that's just how me and my husband have always been because when people did know that oh they got it you get what i'm saying we've always been used specifically my husband he's always been the one who was like more had you know income coming in so his he is all he's always the one that his fleet is coming to like oh can i borrow a couple of dollars you get what i'm saying we end up having to put it into it because it just it was getting to be too much and then it was like at the end of the day you really don't give a fuck about us <laughs> you only care about you know when you could come to us and ask us for stuff so i just don't like that that's my personal reason why i like i just I don't like it because I've had it to where people have only come to me when they needed stuff. But then when I needed help or somebody to lean on, I was never able to go to anybody because I was always the one who had it. Hold on, y'all. I'm coming in here to return some she and stuff. I'm so fucking random. God damn, this conversation was all over the place. Oh y'all so i had went to wendy's earlier today if you have not went to wendy's and got their breakfast breakfast is chef's kiss um they have the maple butter is it maple bacon chicken sandwich chicken croissant and it comes with honey butter why did they give me a side of honey butter y'all do you see this so you do realize i'm gonna be at home frying me up some damn chicken and you putting this all over it with some waffles. Quit playing with me. Okay, y'all. So I am back. Um, I just really like the interaction I had in UPS. They were really, really nice. Um, it was funny because I don't know if you guys know, but my last name is Strange. Um, not strange, like it's it's a strange last name, but it's actually like Asia Strange. So, um oh, shoot. Yeah, they had end up asking me, like, are you related to a Raymond Strange? And I'm like, is he from here? Like, was he born and raised in New Mexico? Because if he was born and raised in New Mexico, then no. But if he came from somewhere else, then probably so. Um, I told her, I said, I'm from Michigan. I just moved out here. I said, but, you know, I said that side of my family came from Arkansas. So, we probably are. <laughs> but, you know, we will have to reach 
deep, deep down into our dang on family tree to see how, you know, we are um, related. Because I don't meet a lot of strangers, like, and it was funny because they were like, oh, Dr. Strange. And that's what I tell people all the time whenever they ask me what my last name is, like, to confirm when I'm doing, like, paperwork. Or if I'm a doctor's office or something like that, they're like, oh, um your last name and I'm like strange like Dr. Strange and they start laughing so sorry it was just a really really nice interaction that I had with them so yes y'all today we are doing what we're doing um oh okay so yes back to what I was talking about before I hopped like had to hop out or whatever so um I feel like I should probably do a separate video on how to like make it during hard times because y'all me and my husband we've been together for 10 years and it wasn't always easy like I, I went from making nine dollars an hour to now I make triple that you get what I'm saying um but it wasn't easy over the last 10 years doing that it was hard during those times like it was times when i didn't even know if i would be able to afford taking care of my oldest son and um i guess i could give you guys the backstory i've never given you guys the backstory of like my life and um i guess me so um when i turned 20 21 years old i end up having my first son or 22 i had him at 22 because he's 10 years old and i'm 32 now <laughs> I know mama look good darn good when I was 20 21 years old you know I didn't go to college I really didn't feel like college was for me um I actually wanted to be a singer <laughs> I wanted to be in the entertainment industry um that didn't work out but um you know I just end up working I said well hey I'm gonna sit here and I'm I'm going to work to take care of my child my son's father um god rest his soul he has since passed away um he did not help me out so i had to kind of just thug it out on my own so y'all was only making like nine dollars an hour um yeah i wasn't making no money <laughs> and i had to a whole child to raise so after that i said you know what i'm going to oh look for another job making more money and that's what i ended up doing i got a job making i think 12 dollars an hour working at a bank during that time i end up getting married so me kevin and i kevin was making way like when we got together kevin was already making like forty thousand a year so um he was making way more money than i was um and then Kevin ended up having a mental break. So he randomly stole a school bus, tried to drive over to Canada, and they end up diagnosing him as a, a manic bipolar. Had that episode, he ended up losing everything. So after that, he like rebounded. We still stayed together. Everybody was telling me that I shouldn't stay with him, but I stayed with him because I loved him and I cared about him and I feel like you shouldn't base your relationship off of other people and what other people think and feel about you I feel like you should gauge it on your own because at the end of the day you're the person who has to be in that relationship you get what I'm saying nobody else had to be in the relationship with Kevin and I just Kevin and I so and I'm glad that I made the decision to stay because look at where we are now you get what i'm saying we're staying in a brand new house um because me and him work together as a couple and the type of person that he is um you know um i've been able to afford certain things in life because of our teamwork you get what i'm saying um and i feel like i wouldn't have learned the lessons that i learned from being in a relationship with somebody else so anyways um so uh, I was making twelve dollars an hour there, so they end up bumping me to I think like thirteen dollars. I end up having my second child, which is Hunter, 
and I had real bad postpartum depression. So I ended up quitting that job. I got another job working as a patient advocate at a healthcare company. And um, I was making like thirteen fifty an hour or something like that. And I just kept praying. And this, this is why, like, I understand they say that delusion um, or the lucky girl syndrome or whatever uh, works. Because, y'all, I was so freaking miserable at that job. I was so miserable. And I want people to understand that rejection is protection, okay? I was so miserable at that job. I kept putting in job app after job app after job app. So finally, this other healthcare care company ended up hitting me up and they were like, hey, you know, um, we wanted to see, you know, you know how they ask you the preliminary questions or whatever. So I didn't like meet what they were looking for and they were going to pay me around like $16, $17 an hour at this point. So I was just like, you know, when they told me like, okay, I don't think we'll be moving forward with you. Like I was devastated y'all, like devastated. I was like, my whole life is just gonna be dismal and it's just gonna be reduced to me working in this contact center for the rest of my life, being a patient advocate. Oh my God, I was so dramatic. I, I At this job that I was so desperately trying to get out of being at, um, they, I, I worked the morning shift so people wouldn't call in until around like eight, nine o'clock. I would come in at seven. So I had a whole hour, almost hour and a half before other people would come in to myself. So I took the time to literally write out my affirmations and write out my daily life every single morning, every single morning for a month and a half. Every single morning I carved out time Monday through Friday to write these affirmations every single morning y'all by the end of that month and a half randomly um the company that i work at now so this was in 2016 so randomly the company that i work for now end up hitting me up and they were like hey we're doing like a mass hiring or whatever we came across your resume came across your resume and we want to know can you come to this um you know our like open interviews so i'm like okay or whatever so y'all it took everything in the world to get to this interview okay y'all so um they end up hitting up other people who worked with me but i was the only one who took it serious and said hey i'm gonna actually go to the the open interview or whatever everybody else was like whatever you know they was kind of like talking shit like oh I don't, I don't care about that it ain't nothing for real or whatever i was like well i'm gonna try you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go so i had asked my manager i'm like hey can i leave like can i take this day off or take a half a day this day she's like no it's too many other people that's already like off that day what you can do is leave at 2 30 because my shift was over at like 3 30 or whatever so, and I wasn't telling her that I was going to an interview. I just told her that I needed to take that day off. So, she was like, um, which had I known that I was going to get the new job, I would have just called in. But So, y'all, the place that now, the interviews, they were open interviews. You could come at any point in time. Your name just needed to be on the list. So, you just needed to, like, uh, RSVP to, like, have a sit-down interview. But you could come between, like, this time and this time so the cutoff time was i believe three o'clock three o'clock or three thirty so y'all the place i i i was leaving at two thirty it took a half an hour it was actually three it was three o'clock because I, I it was a half an hour from where i worked at to this interview y'all when i say i was flooring it down the highway trying to get to this dang on interview Y'all, I got there at, I left at 2.30, I got there at 2.58, okay? Cutoff time was 3 o'clock. So, I end up, you know, rushing in. They were like, oh, hey, you know, you're fine. We're still doing the interviews or whatever. She was like, you know, sit down. So, I sat down. They end up calling me in. I had an interview with this lovely lady named Tuesday. <laughs> um, she asked me a couple questions. Y'all, it was the easiest interview I have ever been to. 
um she ended up asking me a couple of questions and then she said okay um can you go over go back into the room you came in and sit on this side or whatever so i'm like okay so i had one and did that and then all of a sudden somebody else ended up coming and grabbing me so y'all we were sitting there and she pulled me to the side she said hey um i just wanted to let you know we want to offer you the position it's a full-time position 40 hours a week um you will be working out in this area or whatever i don't want to say what area because i still currently work for the company but um she was like yeah we want you to work in this area and we will be starting you off at 19 dollars an hour y'all i said she said is that okay do you think it's okay yes it's okay like what what do you mean now mind y'all this is back in 2016 2017 this is january 2017 so 19 dollars an hour in 2017 baby i told him yes and y'all i went back to my uh the you know my job or whatever y'all that night that night like after she did you know she was like okay we're gonna keep in contact with you this is what the start date is gonna be we it's basically three weeks away or it might have been two weeks it was two weeks away so i got hired like at the beginning of january my start date was january 23rd of 2017 so y'all i went home and typed up my resignation that night and said it on my my uh what's the name my manager's desk because um so y'all i turned in my resignation and i ended up starting there so as you guys know i was there from 2017 all the way to 2021 i left went to another company and now i'm back at this same company or whatever but i came back making more cheddar and i'm not in the same department i'm in a total different department because like since over that span of time from 2017 till now i got my degree so i was eligible to go to a different department because i had the required like education or whatever for that department so yes make way more money now yeah like y'all if i i if i would have sat there and just was thinking about the other healthcare company trying to just pay me 16 17 pressed about that and when have said you know what and this is the thing what i've always realized because i felt the same way when i just came back to this job or whatever with the pre the other job that i was working like last year or whatever like i was I was in a position, of course, because I was moving out here. I needed to make more money. Like, I'm sorry, the position they had me doing some of everything there and was not paying me what I needed to get paid. I like it got to a point because the rehiring process back into this company was so y'all. I went through eight interviews, five different positions, eight interviews. So, you know, that over a two-month span. So, I just, like, I was ready to give up. Because I'm like, either you want to have me on or you don't. Like, <laughs> I'm about to just go somewhere else and look for, look for another job. Because, like, y'all doing too much. Like, that's how I felt or whatever. And when I just got to the point where I just released it and said, hey, whatever happens, happens. Like, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and stress myself out about it. That's when they end up calling. And they end up calling with more than what I had even asked for yes i told them between this and this point and they gave me more don't don't consider rejection like rejection is protection you get what i'm saying especially if you got faith that everything is gonna work out if you sit here and you think you think that something is the best for you when in actuality like god the universe got something way better you get what i'm saying i would have sat there settling for 16 17 dollars an hour when god really wanted me to be making 19 20 dollars an hour you get what i'm saying and it helped us like that first year of me making the 19 dollars an hour of course this was back in 2017 you also there was some paper um <laughs> um with me making the 19 dollars an hour um we were able to go on our first trip so i was able to go on a trip um we was able to go on different vacations like i was able to get a better car like i was you know my life like kind of elevated after that so and then now you know i was able to um make the money that i'm making now and now i have that extra income to now invest into the um forex market and make more money from my disposable income from my nine to five so 
please just like don't like god's rejection or the rejection is actually god's protection okay so if you're going through something right now you like i don't understand why nothing is working out trust me trust me that's how i was feeling in like 2021 that's what made me end up quitting that job or whatever because i just felt miserable at my job i felt miserable just like in general i was living in my mom's basement like kevin and i and the kids we were living in my parents basement y'all the trenches and i just you know i didn't want that for myself i was 29 years old yeah tw no 30 i was 30 <laughs> 30 years old kevin was 32 living in my parents basement um everybody and their mama was asking us like well when are y'all gonna move 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 you get what i'm saying and it was it was just a lot of pressure from people who didn't even have any real relevance in my life you get what i'm saying like none of y'all are you if i move are y'all gonna pay my bills Hey, it be like that like you worried about my living situation i don't even live with you like and if my living situation changes you still ain't gonna make let me live with you you ain't gonna contribute not a damn dime to anything i got going on over here so why the f where i stay at matters to you this is what you gotta deal with when you stay around like a large family like people just be worried about that ain't got nothing to do with them so we had like a lot of that where people were like down talking to us and stuff like oh when are y'all gonna buy a house buy a house and become house poor buy a house that i really really don't really want like that that need a whole bunch of work and shit done to it like people just be saying stuff because it's the thing to say like i really be feeling like that a lot of times because at 32 years old you would think oh you guys should own a house you should do this you should have no i guess i'm the new age millennial where shit rent everything and be motherfucking happy and to be honest like i know that may sound ignorant as fuck like why would you sit here and rent you know lease or rent or do this if you really think about it and this is coming from owning two cars and leasing three you get what i'm saying the two cars that i own where the fuck are they where are they guess where they are in the motherfucking trash yard okay the landfill somebody's landfill somewhere or somebody's car junkyard that's the first thing you overpay for those damn cars for one a car depreciates i feel like you should lease a car reason being is unless you're sitting here buying a goddamn old school mclaren or ferrari or anything like that why would you sit here and buy something that depreciates the second it leaves the lot it's better to rent something like that so not only that like say if you rent it or if you're leasing your car you're only paying for saying for two years you're paying maybe ten thousand dollars for two years or whatever compared to you getting a forty thousand dollar car and having to pay that off after six years and then you still have to get another car after the six years you get what i'm saying you still got to get another car especially if you were like younger i could see if you was an old person and that's what me and kevin say like maybe once we turn like 60 65 we retire or whatever then we'll get a car because we know we're not gonna put so many miles on it not so much wear and tear at that point it'll be long like it'll have more longevity even though it's depreciating you get what i'm saying um but right now as a young couple parents we need reliable transportation and i don't want to sit there and have the responsibility of maintenance and all that stuff on a car like i swear to god the maintenance on <laughs> all of my used cars that i bought baby i was coming out of thousands of dollars i might as well have leased it and threw it back at them motherfuckers when when it when the two years was up you get what i'm saying and a lot of times after two two three years this car i'm keeping for three after two or three years you want a newer car anyway because then it started wearing down and having like mechanical issues and stuff like that so no like i don't that's just me that's my reasoning behind leasing and then with the renting if anything go wrong hello yes the furnace went out hello 
yeah something's wrong with this or that the venting this oh yeah mm -hmm. okay yep come come do that come get that together like i feel like if you are not in the position and people don't be thinking about that like financially monetarily wise if you're not bringing in enough money to keep up on the maintenance of something lease it <laughs> lease it or rent it and as i just told y'all like i'm i'm like yeah we make a decent amount of money but the stuff that we want we are not in the position to own it and i'm completely okay with being transparent and telling people that we are not in the position to own it if we were making three hundred four hundred thousand dollars a year then yeah i would say yes i should be going out and purchasing a home you get what i'm saying but i know right now no i'm not in the position to purchase a home especially the house that i want and i'm not about to sit here and settle i'm not about to get just a regular rinky dink ass house and they have to put all this work into it like no i want to i want a new house but i'm fine with renting until then not only that but i low-key want to be a traveler so i don't need something that i'm gonna be like tied down to so that's another thing i don't like the way our lifestyle is set up what we're trying to do we're not really trying to have something that's like stable here so that really irritated me when people kept asking like oh when are you guys gonna get a house when are you guys gonna buy a house buy a house buy a house buy a house buy a house, buy a house, buy a house, buy a house. i don't that's not our lifestyle that's not what we want to do you get what i'm saying and then end up being house poor yeah there is a thing such thing as being house poor people who sit there and buy purchase houses when they're not really truly in the position to buy a house and then they end up being house poor and you wonder why you don't never see that person no more after they get a goddamn house because they all their money and everything is going into a damn house that end up they're saying should have been generational wealth when it actually it was a fucking money pit because a lot of people are not educationally like there when it comes to purchasing houses uh flipping houses um rent being a landlord like you should still educate yourself in all of this even if you're just becoming a homeowner you get what i'm saying so that you can have a good scope and broad view of your options and where you really truly or have a good gauge of where you truly are at when it comes to purchasing a home and being a homeowner and being a landlord and or and or flipping homes and doing all that like you should know all of your options so anyways um i'm sorry i went into a whole just 30 minute rant <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm i'm about to go inside the house or at least call them and tell them to bring their ass out here because it's almost 11 o'clock we gotta get going mama's trying to be in these streets okay y'all so this is literally like 15 minutes later i went inside and changed my clothes i did not feel like doing my edges i ain't feel like doing none of that because my i need to wash and wash my hair but I was waiting to wash my hair until Tuesday because I got some weave coming. Um, go, 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 go. And actually, I was waiting till Friday because I got some things I got to purchase. Um, I got to get that mirror that everybody used to do their own hair. And then I also need to buy some human hair because I'm doing um, goddess locks. So y'all know I be having to leave when they get in the car because they just be so loud. No. It's trying to eat it, Mom. It's trying to eat this short. It's trying to eat this short. Stop playing with him, Jay. You can throw that a little hint. She's picking on the grass now. Hi. He hit me. He had to enclose him. He attacked that ass. Hi. How are you? That's not another one. Okay. I'm so mad. My camera don't work. Can I see what happens with the back camera? Okay, y'all. So currently, we are at the zoo. Are you having fun? I like you. 
white hair. It look, yeah, it is. What is going on? A white hair, mom. But it don't look like that in person. The kids are enjoying themselves. They're looking at the hippos right now. Um, so I just realized that my back camera doesn't work on my phone still, even though I got my phone fixed. So I'm gonna have to take that in and figure out what to do with it. Um, if you guys wanna see any type of wildlife, this is the second time this year that we came to the Albuquerque Zoo. I do have another video that didn't get any views. I, that was a whole thing, y'all. Anyways, um, if you guys wanna see that one, go back to that one. I'll probably link it and you guys can see the whole zoo and how we experienced the first time because nothing here has changed since when we came here the first time. So. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm so mad. My camera is not working. Let me see. Jace, you all in my view. Okay, y'all, so we made it back to the house, and um, we did a little bit of shopping. We had to go to Walmart. We had to get dinner for tonight. Tonight, we have a catfish, and I'm cooking cornbread, yams with um, cheese rice. But anyways, y'all, I just looked at the shade room, and this nigga blue face is so annoying. Like, he's so annoying he gonna sit up there and say basically that beyonce got cheated on so what makes him think as women we ain't gonna get cheated on um baby beyonce is with jay-z okay she's with a man of means fa fame and power okay um things hit different for men who have those three things sir you have minimal fame, minimal power, no power, no power at all, and little to no money. Like, you are gassed up. I guess he's gassed up because Krishan was the one loving his dirty draws. But, baby, most women out here, would real women, would not be sitting here dealing with you and your shenanigans and, and then he's sitting here saying that women don't even bring half of anything to the table baby majority of the time a real woman is bringing the whole table at this point you get what i'm saying like a lot of women are doing their damn thing they are they don't need a man and this goes into a video that I was watching about trad wives and stay or I forgot what they're called. Are they stay at home girlfriends? Something like that. But like, yeah, no, like my thing is it's damned if you do damned if you don't, because if you a trad wife or a stay at home girlfriend or mom or whatever the case may be, men do not favor or look at your role in the household as something important so it's like okay i'm not appreciated if i am taking on the traditional role of a woman which is to be at home and to be a housemaker but i'm also not appreciated or like taken seriously if i'm out here in the workforce making my own bread now i'm too independent you get what I'm saying? And I'm trying to be a man. So it's like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. My thing is, as a woman, I'm not about to sit here and put my all, all my baskets into a, a man who can't even sit here and make up his mind. He don't know if he want me to be feminine and my soft femininity or if I need to be bringing shit to the table. Like, which one is it? This is the reason why, like, I can't deal with men nowadays. My husband, he all right. I didn't train him. But when I listen to the perspective and the mindset of men nowadays, like, what the f are y'all talking about? Y'all uneducated, unlearned, like, uh, they're, like, far in between the ones who actually understand and, like, the role of a woman. And a lot of them are women haters. Like, y'all need to go to counseling at this point that's how i feel a lot of y'all men need to go to counseling deal with your mommy issues deal with your ego issues you need to deal with your misogyny like 
what? Like, and my thing is with Blueface, he just an ignorant bastard, to be honest, okay? <laughs> Being all the way one, he's an ignorant bastard. So, um, yeah, like, and his mom, and then my thing is, his mama is just as ignorant. So, Apple don't fall far from the tree, clearly. And the way he treats his mother and how she's okay with him treating her that way. Baby, how do you think a nigga is going to be treating women? So I just, I just, yeah. I really feel like a lot of healing and counseling needs to be done for these men out here. And they need to get it together. Like at the end of the day, whatever a woman brings and whatever you bring it should be equal and it should be counted as equal no his contribution to keep you know keeping the household and that's the thing a lot of people are going dutch now so it's like i'm bringing half to the table you still saying that i'm not doing enough as a woman monetarily but you as a man your only requirement is to sit here and bring home half a paycheck or to contribute half to the household but i'm doing the same thing as you and it's not enough i need y'all to make it make sense if that's the case baby we going dutch on everything the rent uh the house chores um raising the children but y'all don't want to hear that though Men don't want to hear that, though. They want you to stay in your soft femininity, but then they don't want to be the whole masculine that is equal to that soft femininity. I need y'all to get it together. This world is so ghetto. Just ghetto with... God damn.